when you have a parameterized system and when you change those parameters, it can impact the equilibria. This is called a bifurcation. Let's do a slightly more formal definition. A local bifurcation occurs at an equilibrium, x star, at a parameter, mu star, if in any neighborhood of that point in state and parameter space, that is, I change x a little bit or I change mu a little bit, then there is a change in the number or types of equilibria that you have. Okay, now this, like any math definition, is worth unpacking a little bit. What this means is that a bifurcation occurs at an equilibrium, and the condition is a change in the number or types of equilibria that you have in a small neighborhood. Now we know from our previous lemma, from the previous section, that a necessary condition for such a bifurcation is that the stability criterion fails. And what that means in the context of an equation that has a right-hand side f of x comma mu is that the partial derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at the equilibrium x star comma mu star vanishes, is equal to zero. And indeed, bifurcations usually do occur when this condition is satisfied. It is necessary, but not sufficient. All right, well, that's all kind of technical. Can't we, can we get to some examples of this? One example that we have foreshadowed occurs when you have a pair of coupled spinners with different natural frequencies. Remember the way that this works. When you look at the dynamics on the phase angle phi, we have d phi equals the difference in that frequency minus two epsilon sine phi. Okay, now that frequency difference is like adding a constant to that sine function. So if we look at the diagram, then when the frequencies are the same, we have one stable and one unstable equilibrium. We have perfect sync. If the frequencies differ by a little bit, then what happens is those equilibria move and we have phase locking. But if you keep pulling those two frequencies apart, if you keep raising the graph of that sine function, then what happens? Eventually, that stable and that unstable equilibrium get closer and closer together, and then boom, that's it. There's no more equilibria, and there's no more phase locking, and those two spinners are just going and doing their thing. They never synchronize, they never lock, never anything like that. That is a bifurcation at the particular point where those two equilibria have come together and merged. That is where the bifurcation is happening. Now, there are other examples as well. Maybe we could, I don't know, maybe we could have a ball that's got a lot of friction and just rolling down a, a gentle hill into a valley. And if our parameter is changing the shape of that landscape, maybe adding a, a little hill in the middle so that there are two valleys off to either side, then that would change the number and types of equilibria nearby with respect to how that ball rolls. There are other examples that we could set up as well. Various complicated rigs with springs and pulling things around. And if you, if you move it just a little bit, if you change this parameter just a little bit, then spring, all of a sudden, everything changes. That, too, is a bifurcation. Now, there's a lot left to say about how bifurcations actually work, and there's a lot of different ways that equilibria can undergo changes with the change in parameter. But the big idea is that bifurcations themselves, just like equilibria, can be classified. This is really a big idea. If you think about all that we have learned in this volume so far, we started off thinking about analytical solutions to dynamical systems, looking at individual orbits. But then we very rapidly generalized to looking at collections of orbits, looking at all solutions to a dynamical system. 
And from there, we said, you know what? It's the equilibria that really matter. And then we classified those equilibria. We got the stability criterion going on. That was all great. Now we have generalized yet further to look at parametrized families of dynamical systems, a, a multiverse of dynamical systems where we change parameters. And we're going to look at changes of equilibria, bifurcations, and then classify them. This is many layers of abstraction that we have climbed thus far. Bifurcations happen when you change parameters. They can change things rather dramatically, but they're not random. They're not arbitrary. And indeed, our next step is to classify bifurcations.